In economics class today, we shall be looking at another interesting topic that we call inflation theory. And under inflation theory, we want to look at the meaning of inflation, what are the causes of inflation. But before the causes of inflation, let's look at types of inflation theories that we have. Then we can now look at causes of inflation. Having looked at the causes of inflation, we shall also examine effects of inflation in an economy before we finally look at the control that is how can we find solution toward inflation in an economy inflation it is a persistent increase in the general price level of goods and services when we are talking about inflation we are looking at a persistent increase in the general price level of goods and services in an economy Okay, now which occur due to the presence of large volume of money in circulation used in purchasing few commodities in the economy. The last class we look at the supply of money. I also we look at quantity theory of money, how the money in circulation and the price level are related. We did explain that. Now we are talking about inflation now, so we are looking at the general price level of goods and services and what is what is causing the increase in prices of goods and services it can be as a result of what the large volume of money in circulation and the large volume of money in the circulation that you are using to do what to buy few commodities so if you have few commodities in the economy and the volume of money in the economy is increasing so there is no way you not pay higher prices for goods and services that are available in the economy. So that's why we call it persistent increase in the general price level, known as inflation. Types of inflation. Number one, demand pool inflation. What do you write that? It is an inflation which emanates from excess of demand over supply. We have also treated demand and supply analysis here. We come to a point where we try to look at equilibrium price and under equilibrium price we have what we call excess demand excess supply now when we are talking about demand pool inflation we have demand will be greater than supply that is excess of demand over supply consumer will fall the price of the commodity to move up you know when we explain uh, excess demand we said that uh, uh, the price is below the situation where we have the equilibrium price to be below, right? We are going to have what we call excess demand. And for equilibrium price to occur, right, when we have excess demand, the price needs to go up. So here, the consumers will push or will pull the price up toward the equilibrium point. So when we are talking about demand pull inflation, we are talking about a situation whereby demand is greater than supply. Why? As a result of large volume of money in the circulation, in which there is no corresponding increase in supply of goods and services. So, if there is no increase in supply of goods and services, and there is an increase in the volume of money in the circulation, so people will use this money to buy few commodities. That is, large money will be used to buy few commodities. Then we are talking about demand pool inflation. That is why I said it occurs due to large volume of money in the circulation, which fails to have a corresponding increase in supply of goods and services. So that's what we call demand pool inflation. Number two, cost push inflation. We are looking at this from the angle of the cost of production. That is, it is generated by an increase in the cost of acquiring the inputs of production, thereby increased costs of production are passed on to consumer in the form of high prices for the goods and services on sale. So what we are trying to analyze under cost push inflation is that we trace inflation toward the cost of acquiring raw materials, particularly on the side of uh, labor. If labor is agitated for increase in wage, wages and salaries, so there is no way there will be increase in the cost of production because wages and salary are part of cost of production. So a situation where the employer 
decide to welcome the, uh, the agitation of the labor. In that case, the cost of production will increase. But the employer too will want to have increase in profit. So by having more to its own, definitely everything will buy toward the cost of production. So what the cost of production can increase, consumers will pay high prices for these goods once they want to uh, consume the commodity. So when we are talking about cost push inflation, it is as a result of increase in wages and salaries of labor as well as an increase in the profit margin of the employer or of the firm that will now pass on to the consumer in the form of high prices of the goods. So here we now have inflation. So, but this inflation is not as a result of large volume of money circulation, but as a result of the increase in cost of production that we call cost push inflation. The third type, hyperinflation. It occurs when a persistent inflation becomes uncontrollable and value of money keeps on declining rapidly. So if in an economy they are experiencing uh, persistent inflation whereby the monetary authority cannot control the rate at which prices of goods and services are moving up. In that case, the value of money will, uh, will, decline, will have declined rapidly. So here now, it might be as a result of a war that they are experiencing in that economy or budget deficits that the economy adopts. So they, all these can cause hyperinflation. It is also called galloping or runaway inflation. So here, it is not as a result of cost of production or as a result of large volume of money circulation, but it can be as a result of war or budget deficit. One, the value of money continues declining that the monetary authority find it difficult to control, then the, the inflation will now become what we call hyperinflation. Let us look at causes of inflation. There are many causes, but we are going to look at few here. The first one, excessive demand of commodities. If in an economy, demand is greater than supply, then we are going to have excess demand. So as a result of that, there will be an increase in prices of goods and services. So we will now be talking about inflation at the aggregate level because of what? Excessive demand of commodity. So that is, demand is more than supply. So once supply cannot meet people's demand, then we have excess demand, or we call it shortage. In that case, people will buy the available ones at high prices. Number two, high cost of production. If there's an increase in the cost of production, it will affect total output of the fair. How? The more they pay toward the input to use in production, the less they are the input they will be able to acquire in order to use toward production. So output will fall. Once the output can fall, it will affect the total supply on the lower later on. So cost of production can cause inflation because decrease in output will lead to will lead to decrease in supply. And once supply can be so few then demand is greater so at the end of the day there will be shortage and shortage is as a result of what failure to supply more that can be traded or which is traded to high cost of production so inflation will arise as a result of that the third one excessive bank lending if banks can be lending more than what they need in the in the economy definitely inflation is going to occur because the money is not channeled into the appropriate area as a result of our excessive lending of bankers. So bankers want to make, in, make their own money, but the money is not going toward the area that they need it. So as, as on the long run, there will be a large volume of money in the circulation. 
Why? Because bankers have lent out large volume of money, which is not in corresponding increase with the volume of output that they need, which can uh, increase the supply in the economy. So excessive bank lending can cause inflation once they are not channeling the, uh, the resources to appropriate area or once there is an increase in the supply of money in the circulation. The fourth one, low domestic productivity. If in an economy there is no increase in their productivity, then there will be low production. So low production in the domestic economy can cause inflation because the people in the economy are demanding for more. And once there is no increase in supply, then the price of the commodity will increase. So on the long run, we now have what we call increase in prices in general, at the general level. So low domestic productivity can cause inflation. One supply cannot meet demand in such an economy. The fifth one, hoarding. Hoarding will cause artificial scarcity. That is, when, good, when people are hoarding goods, when they su they su supposed to supply the goods into the economy. So uh, consumers will buy the goods at high prices. And why are they paying for that? Because some people are holding the goods, particularly wholesalers and retailers. They can do that in order to, uh, to force the price to increase so that they can make more profit. By doing this, they are causing artificial scarcity in the economy, which will lead to inflation. Effects of inflation. Number one, it discourages savings. An economy experiencing inflation, the people all, and as well as the firms that we have in the economy, they won't have the, the, the encouragement towards savings because one era of today cannot be one era of tomorrow or next week. So it discourages savings. So the extent that people prefer to spend the money today instead of keeping it for future purposes. Number two, it discourages investment. Where there is no savings, there can be investment. So once people are not willing or they are discouraged due to inflation in the economy, so savings will not occur. So once there is no savings, definitely there will be investments. Because economists believe that once there is savings, there will be investments. Three, it discourages exports. Countries won't be able to export their goods once they are experiencing inflation. That is, a country that has a producer or producer with high cost of production, how will those producers be able to export their commodities to other countries where they are not experiencing much inflation. Even if they are experiencing inflation, we don't know the rate of their whole inflation. So, because by exporting, the price will increase when the commodities get there. So, if they are substitute for the, for the good, then the good won't be able to have foreign buyer or foreign markets. So in that case, inflation discourages exports. Number four, creditor lose. How? When you give a loan to someone to make use of, when the person is returning the money, you cannot compare the past value of the money with the, uh, the present value of the money. The money will have lost its value before the creditor get the money back from the debtor. So the creditor lose as a result of what decline in the value of uh, money being granted to the debtor. Number five, it leads to loss of value of money. Once people are not able to buy many commodities with what large volume of money, it means the money has lost its value. That is, people are using large volume of money. To purchase few commodities so in that case the money 
has lost its value as a result of uh, inflation. Number six, it encourages high profit margin. How? Producers are willing to supply more to the market once there's an increase or once there are increase in prices. That is, once they observe that uh, the prices of their commodities have increased, they want to take more to the market for sale. So automatically, there will be increase in total sales. That is, their total revenue will increase, which in turn to higher profit making in their, in their firm. So producers will be willing whenever there is a inflation because prices of goods and services encourage them to supply more. Number seven, it reduces body of debt. Here, as a debtor or debtors, the benefit when there is inflation. How? When they are returning the money, the money will have lost its value. Before that, they will have used the money to make more money. So when they are returning the money, it won't be the value that they've got it from their creditor that they are going to return the money. So have not used the money for so many things that yield them a lot of their profit. So they will be able to make uh, to have a reduction in the body of debt. Not only that, having gotten the money for whatever you want to do or want to do with the money toward, toward the activities, that is toward economic activities. So the the debtors will have made will have made much profit before returning the money back to the creditor. So here we are saying that debtor gains during inflation because they are still returning the, uh, the, the specific amount taken without considering if inflation has worsened the value of money or not. So, debt or gain during inflation, why credit or lose during inflation? Control of inflation. Number one, use of monetary measures. We have seen causes of inflation, right? How can we control them? The first one that we can make use of is what we call use of monetary measures. And when we are talking about monetary measures, we are calling the attention of monetary authority to take action towards controlling inflation. And if monetary authority is going to take action, they have instruments that they make use of. We have what we call bank rate. And when we are talking about bank rate, they can use it in reducing the, the volume of money and the circulation by increasing this rate so that it will be difficult for commercial bank to come for loan and or give it out to their customers because once there's an increase in bank rate interest rate of commercial bank will increase this will discourage people from borrowing not only that they can also make use of what we call open market operation by selling treasure bill doing this either to increase the volume of money in the circulation or decrease decreasing the volume of money in the circulation so they can use this instrument in controlling inflation so use of monetary measure will assist in what reducing the pressure that an economy is having as a result of uh, inflation number two use of fiscal measures fiscal measure can also be used that is the area of a uh, fiscal policy and when we're talking about fiscal policy, majorly tax is the main thing that they make use of in controlling inflation. Where there is an inflation, government or fiscal authority can increase taxes so that people won't be able to go for consumption of such commodity. If there's an increase in tax, it will bank on prices of goods and services. That is, the prices will go up in order to reduce the purchase of certain commodities or government can decide to increase tax in the area of a director so that income of consumer can drop so that they can have little this little will not be used to purchase the available commodity so later on if consumer do not have enough more goods will be available so that in order to meet the excess demand so on the long run demand will not equate supply because once we have excess goods in the economy and consumers are not having the money to buy 
the price will drop and come to equilibrium. So by doing that, inflation will be reduced. Another way of controlling inflation, industrialization. Government should encourage people to go into industrializing the economy. By industrializing the economy, inflation will drop because you are transforming your, your, your primary sector into secondary sector and tertiary sector so that more goods and services will be work produced and enough will be, work, will, be, will be available for people to buy. So by doing this, inflation will drop because of large goods and services that they have produced in the economy. But if the economy is not industrialized, the economy will still be experiencing inflation because they have not transformed the primary sector into secondary and tertiary sector that can boost the economy. Number four, granting of subsidy. Government can come in by granting subsidy to sectors that are very important in order for the producers in that sector to increase their output. So by doing this, producer will be able to increase their output so that more will be taken to the market for sale. So later on the long run, prices of goods and services will come down because of our subsidy being granted. Number five, increase in production. Government should encourage producers toward increasing uh, production of goods and services. Because if there is no increase in production of goods and services, there is no way prices of goods and services can drop. So shortage is what is causing inflation. So if you can have surplus goods in the economy, so inflation will come down. The last one, checking hoarding. We have said that uh, where there is hoarding, there will be artificial scarcity of goods and services that will lead to inflation. But if hoarding can be checked, then inflation will be reduced. That is checking the activities of uh, wholesalers, checking the activities of retailers. Not only these two people, even producers too can be checked in order to avoid holding in the economy which can cause artificial scarcity of wood that will lead to increase in prices of goods and services in the economy. We want to look at value of money and price index. What is value of money? Value of money is the quantity of goods and services that a given amount can buy at any particular time. This, when you have certain amount of money the next question is to ask that how many quantity of goods and services can you acquire with this given amount of money in a particular period of time? So, assuming you have 100,000 Naira, how many quantity of goods and services can you acquire with this? The price level will tell us if you'll be able to acquire that quantity or not. But let us look at price index. Price index. Is a, is a weighted average of prices which is expressed as a percentage of prices existing in the base year. It is expressed as price in the current year divided by price in the previous year times 100. We give what we call price index. Now, if the price in the current year is greater than the previous year, it implies an increase in price from one period to another period. It indicates inflation. But a situation where the period price is greater than the current price, it implies a fall in price of goods in that period. So it implies deflation. Now, we are going to look at the relationship between value of money and price index. Now. We are going to conclude the value of money and price index by looking at the statement that it should be noted that there is an inverse relationship between value of money and price index. What are we trying to analyze here is that once there is an increase in prices of goods and services, the value of money will drop. But a situation where there is a decrease in prices of goods and services, the value of money will go up. So that's why I've said that value of money depends on the price level of goods and services in an economy.
So the two, the value of money and price there, they have inverse relationship. If one is increasing, the other one will be what? Decreasing. But value of money is affected by price index. Example, question one. The indicator of value of money in the market is A, the general price level, B, effective supply, C, the equilibrium price, D, consumer's income. The right answer is A, the general price level. Question two. Which of the following categories of people do not gain during inflation? A. Debtors B. Businessmen C. Shareholders D. Creditors The right answer is D. Creditors Question 3. The purchasing power of the Naira will fall when A. Workers are retrenched B. The color of the Naira changed C. There is inflation D. The Naira is overvalued The right answer is C. There is inflation